Welcome to DOS Geek. So what we have here is the Microsoft Go tablet. Now there are not a lot of fantastic options with tablets that have Linux pre-installed on them. Thankfully, Pine64 is working on a tablet and I tend to love a lot of things by that company. But until that time, the only options really are taking an existing tablet and wiping off whatever operating system it, that's on it and trying to put a Linux operating system in its place. That is what I did here with the Microsoft Surface Go. Now, I personally love the hardware on the Surface Pro lines, the one, the two, the three. I haven't tried the four yet, but I hear it's quite good as well. And the Microsoft Go is kind of their entry level into the tablet market here uh, of devices. And I'll show you around the hardware and also the software, what we've done here. And to give you a little hint, a little teaser, this is Endeavor OS on this tablet here. So an Arch-based distro runs absolutely beautifully. And this whole process isn't so hard. Well, it's not gonna be hard for you because I've already done all the work to figure out how to get everything to rotate and set up and touch screen to work and all of those things. And it's not without its little quirks here and there, but for the most part, we have a fully functional tablet that I'm going to show you around. So first off, let's take a look at the hardware. So the first thing you'll notice with the Surface Go is that it is a very thin tablet here. On the bottom we have is the connector for the keyboard. This is magnetic, so it just snaps into place. And then the keyboard can go down like this or comes up kind of like a laptop keyboard. So it's got a nice little arch to it while you're typing. Really well designed. Speaking of the keyboard, you got a nice big uh, mouse pad there that you can touch pad uh, that you can utilize and the gesturing and everything works you've got nice clicky keys it's not perfect it's not like a full-blown keyboard but certainly good enough that you can type on it this also acts as your cover for the device so if you're going to get this you definitely have to have the keyboard attachment um, you can get all of this used of course on ebay you don't have to buy it brand new if you don't want to on the other side of the tablet, we have a USB-C. We have our freedom jack, our ability to listen to music right there. And we also have our charging connector port. And sorry, that wasn't in focus for you. And over here, we don't have anything, but we've also got this stand that's really nice and stiff. I can move this device into any position I like, whether it's on my lap, or I'm being mobile with it uh, on the sitting on the couch, on the, on the armrest of a couch or a chair, it will work there as well, no problem. So this is what I like about this type of device because you may be saying, well, why not just get a laptop? Well, it's really hard to find a laptop that's really small and slim. Say if you're going on a work and you've got to bring, you're going on a work business trip and you have to bring your work laptop in addition to you want something personal, then this is a really good option because you won't even notice it in your bag because of the lightweight. Here we have the ability to expand through the micro SD slot there as well. You've got a rear facing camera and a front facing camera, but I don't want you to focus on those because those I have not yet, one of the only quirks, major quirks features I have not been able to get to work yet, but you can see that I pretty much cover up the cameras anyways. It's not something I'm using this for. I'm not gonna take this to a concert to film it and ruin everybody else's experience by blocking their view. Um, I have my own phone camera for that. So, uh, you know, the camera's not working actually to some of the more privacy-oriented folks. Maybe a feature um, versus being an issue, but just know that's one of the major features I have not yet been able to get to work and I don't know why because cameras are pretty compatible across the board with Linux so there's just something specific with these cameras but we have the nice touch screen feature here so uh, don't mind the lighting issues that I'm having here getting that nice and clear if I remove the light you can see my shirt and my reflection better but you can see that the picture is very very clear on this laptop so if I want to go into the file system for instance I can launch all of that right here from touchscreen. So I do not have to 
uh, utilize the keyboard if I don't want to. Although utilizing the keyboard is just a far better experience. You're gonna get much more uh, work done, which is pretty much the case with all tablets anyways. That's one of the biggest issues I have with having almost every Android tablet and iPad known to mankind I've tried. They just don't have the full power and apps and things that I need of a full operating system to be totally productive. And that's why I love the Surface Pro line and the Surface Go line here. Now, the other thing is, what about auto-rotate? Well, I've got that figured out here as well. So you can see we have auto-rotation working. So I can use it in this form factor if I'm reading a book or doing something along those lines. That's no problem here as well. And it is so hard to control something uh, from having a camera in front of you, which you can see we can get into all of our different apps, including the terminal here. So, so far I've got Steam installed. Yes, you can game on this. I have only Office installed, Simple Note, and uh, we've got Transmission. And of course we have our terminal where we can do all the uh, fancy work, you know, look like, feel like a hacker. So now, once we flip it back, it will rotate. We can click back in our keyboard and we're good to go, right? Like that, and that's pretty awesome. So what you're gonna need to get this all up and running is a lot of dongles. Number one, Wi-Fi does not work out of the box, so you're gonna need an ethernet dongle. This one's made by Pluggable and it's, it's USB. My Microsoft Go came with this adapter which takes the USB-C and converts it to a USB port. Kind of hard to get into camera focus here. There you go. So you can see the USB port. This came with the Microsoft Go so you can get one of these USB-C to USB adapters. And this will also allow you to connect a gaming controller so that you can play games. And if you want, you can get something like this USB-C to HDMI so that you can display this, uh, you know, the screen uh, in a presentation or something along those lines. So next, let's take a look at gaming on this device because it's just fun and kind of shows you the power of this little tablet slash laptop slash Linux machine here running Arch Endeavor. The other thing you'll notice is that Arch Ende or Endeavor comes with XFCE. I did not have a great experience with XFCE. I could get some stuff to work with touchscreen, but overall the menus and things were just not set correctly to allow the scaling that you would need for a tablet. So I installed the GNOME desktop instead, and I'll have the directions for everything that I did out there on my website, dosgeekcommunity.com. So you're gonna to wanna to go there if you get a Microsoft Go to check out what I've done to get these things working. So let's check out some gaming now. So we're gonna play some Bro Force here using the Logitech F310 or whatever it is. The most inexpensive game pad controller that you can get, um, but I like it. So you're gonna need that dongle to USB. And this little Logitech controller, by the way, works with dang near everything. I pretty much use it as my exclusive game controller. I've had the Xbox One, I have the PlayStation 4, but I love it. Bro Force, awesome little game. Obviously, you're not gonna be playing the latest AAA title on this, the GPU can't handle it, but this is perfectly good enough uh, for you to be able to play any of the typical tablet games that you would expect to play on a tablet based system. You can see I'm just killing it here as Indiana Jones bro or whatever they name him here. They have a lot of playoffs of different uh, action heroes from the 80s. Absolutely love this game. But it games really well. Absolutely you know, no hesitation, no sweating, no lag, no issues like that. Just a really fun tablet to game with. So definitely that's an option for you as well if you pick up this tablet to do some light gaming along with the productivity. All right, so there are a couple more things that I want to cover. One is the battery life here. So it is reported that the Surface Go's get about seven to eight hours of battery life. And that's exactly about what I'm getting with this. Now this is a used laptop and the batteries start to degrade laptop tablet. So the batteries start to degrade a little bit over time, but I'm getting about seven hours ish. This has already been running for a couple of hours uh, in between me making this video. And uh, you know, I've been doing everything from slight gaming that you've seen there to uh, working with documents and things like that. So the battery life is definitely on par with what you would expect for the tablet based on the ratings it's getting from the manufacturer. 
Now, the next thing I want to cover is multitasking, because this was an important thing for tablets that a lot of them do terribly. They just, they're not very good at multitasking. A lot of the uh, mobile OSs that they're trying to put on tablets are not initially made for multitasking, and they kind of try to bolt it on, and it never really quite works right. Um, but in this case, of course, you have all the features built into GNOME. So if I need to tile certain windows one way or another, I have that ability to do that right from the keyboard. So I can snap windows uh, just like on a tiling manager here. So I can have over here the document that I'm writing. For instance, every week I write Destination Linux episode and do notes. This isn't one of those episodes, but this is an example of HackMD notes that I utilize. Uh, on an article that I was writing for de your life. And then over here, this may be a news site that I'm getting the information from. Of course, in this case, it's actually Dusky Community website, which is where you're going to get the information here uh, that you need to be able to uh, get the instructions if you end up getting a Microsoft Surface Go for setting it up, at least the things that I've done to this point. And it's right here under the brain dump and under community extras. You can see I list out what you need, uh, the secure boot, how to get around the secure boot on the device so you can install Endeavor OS, the installation, getting Wi-Fi to work, setting up auto-rotate, installing GNOME. All of those instructions are here on the Dosky community website. So go check that out if you get a chance. Finally, I want to show you some of the information on the display itself. So, If we can type correctly here, we can get the display um, up and you can see the resolution we're running at here is 1800 by 1200. And we can change that to any of these options here if you like something better. Uh, but that's the resolution in about 47 hertz. And this was just what it natively chose to go to and I kept it there. And then I increased the scale here to 200% so that it's easier for touch screen. So you've got much bigger icons and things so the touch screen works much better that way. In addition here, you can see the specs of this device. So we have eight gigabytes of memory. Uh, this version has the Pentium 4415Y in it and the Intel 615 uh, GPU running Endeavor OS and this Endeavor OS in this particular version has the 128 gigabyte hard drive. So I've not had to install micro SD to expand uh, the space yet, but of course you have that option to do that. Now, another thing that you're going to want if uh, now I suggest always having this keyboard here and having the keyboard case, this doing all of this without the keyboard case is not only next to impossible, but it's just not going to give you the productivity out of this device that you will want. Um, but we do have the on-screen keyboard. We're using onboard. So anytime I need the on-screen keyboard, I can just swipe up. So if for some reason, I did not have my, this keyboard attached. If I needed to be portable mobile bout, I have that on-screen keyboard set through the accessibility options. Again, it's in the instructions for the on-screen keyboard. And I also installed onboard and did some tweaks there so that even on the login screen, when you initially boot the machine, we have the ability to have the on-screen keyboard to type with. So that's it. That's everything I wanna cover with the Microsoft Surface Go. It's just a fantastic little tablet that can allow you to be productive on a tablet-like device, which is amazing in itself. It's a lot of fun to set up and hack around with. I'm sure there are more things that you can do with this device that I haven't even figured out yet, like maybe getting those cameras to work and things. So more work to be done. But let me know in the comments below what you think of the Microsoft Surface Go here option. I know a lot of people like to utilize the Lenovo tablets and those which supposedly work uh, out of the box too. So that's another option. But I'm very happy with what I've been able to get accomplished with this little device here. Uh, and don't forget to check out the latest Destination Linux episodes and the launching of Destination Linux Network, which the Dosky community channel is now a part of. And if you're a patron of this show, you get special access to the Telegram group that I hang out in, as well as you'll get access to special sections of the Destination Linux Network mumble servers just for DOS Geek fans, gaming nights, those type of things. So go check that out. Leave your comments below, and until next time, get out there and fill your brains.